St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a kind contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Toronto. The second is Vern Billings from Edmonton, Alberta, for, their, for the good health for her and her husband and for their family. The third donor is from Richmond Hill, Ontario, for people with addictions and for the souls in purgatory. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. To celebrate this in a proper manner, we ask the Lord for mercy for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, who placed your people under the singular protection of your Son's most holy mother, grant that all who invoke the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe may seek with ever more lively faith the progress of peoples in the ways of justice and of peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion, for lo, I will come and dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall join themselves to the Lord on that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in your midst, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts shall send me to you. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all people, before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Gospel of the Lord. The fruit of your womb. In my priesthood, I'm guesstimating that I performed over 800 baptisms, certainly of children. When I was first ordained, I kept a book of each child I baptized and their names of the parents. Uh, but as time went on, I got too busy, so all the young people I baptized are recorded in the various uh, parish uh, rectory records. I'm sure most parish priests have done many more baptisms than that. And the characteristic note, it said, every baptism I ever performed is that there's extraordinary joy. There's joy first with the parents. Uh, their happiness is there. It's infectious. It comes out in everything they do, the way they hold the baby, the way they present the very baby. Uh, for their family and friends, uh, if, there, if there are children, siblings there, it's an exciting time. Uh, when there have been brothers or sisters or little kids, they'll stand up and peer into the baptismal font, almost jumping with joy that their brother or sister is being baptized. There's a phrase we use as, in a marriage blessing, may you live to see your children's children. One of the great joys at baptism is when grandparents see their grandchildren and their happiness is again so infectious. And it's not just for the immediate families. Very often we do baptisms in a mass, in the middle of a mass. And after the child is baptized, the parents hold up the children and the congregation uh, claps and applauds because they too are caught by that spirit, that sense of joy. And I think society rejoices in the birth of a child because it means there's hope, there's confidence, there's trust in the future. The human race will continue and it will go on, and there's a joy in that. And that spirit is captured so very beautifully in the meeting between Elizabeth and Mary in this little village called Ein Karim. We don't know exactly where it is. It's commemorated today by a village just outside of Jerusalem. And even today, in the midst of all the struggles, it's, it's an oasis. It's a wonderful, peaceful place 
uh, where there are, are many monasteries and, and places to pray and a church to John the Baptist. And in that you can capture for a moment the sense of the older woman, six months pregnant, and, and Mary just finding out that she's pregnant, uh, embracing, meeting, sharing the tremendous joy, uh, the enthusiasm, whatever intimate conversation they may had. Yes, in, in any pregnancy, there's going to be struggles, there's going to be pain and hurt, but overall, what comes through is the sense of this extraordinary spirit of joy that they had. Indeed, the joy is so infectious that it makes John the Baptist leap in his mother's womb. Carol Houslander, uh, the spiritual writer, says, even before he was born, Jesus brought joy into the world that tiny, hidden, uh, uh, dependent on his mother, in the joy of his mother's room, he brought forth the joy that was expressed not only in Mary and Elizabeth, but in his cousin John the Baptist. And that becomes the characteristic note of the ministry of Jesus, not just when he's born, but at Christmas time. It's joy for all the world that Jesus brings. To be in the company of Jesus is not only to be challenged, not only be to be taught, not only to follow him, not only to look in ourselves, but to have a spirit of joy, that is, a deep sense that one is at peace with the God who created us and one is doing the very best he or she can to be righteous with the world, to insist and to help one another to be with one another. And that's what Jesus' ministry brings. To be close to Jesus is to be in contact with joy. And Mary and Elizabeth have that. They have the deep joy of being mothers, of, of sharing a pregnancy, uh, of wanting to bring a child in the world. But they also have a deep joy in faith because the baby in Mary's womb is not only Jesus like us in all things, as the theologians would say, there is Jesus like us in all things, but there's an anotherness to Jesus, something that totally can't be captured by this world and its sense of his divinity. And that's what Elizabeth recognizes when she says, the mother of my Lord, the mother who's brought creation into being and sustains it, and at the resurrection will take away what is destructive and evil. And Mary is the mother of Jesus physically. She's, however, first and foremost, our mother in faith, because she believes that in her, in this, in her womb, this tiny child hidden, this tiny child who's there is the source of all creation, the origin of life. He who made the stars of heaven, he who made the seas and the mountains and all the universe, she bears in her being. And the God who created us is present to her and to us. And that applies to all of us. Not everybody's going to have a child. Some people can't have children. Some people choose not to have children. Some people, for religious reasons, uh, choose to witness in another way. But the fruit of our womb is anything we do that brings life into the world. I can't find the origin of this quotation. It refers to Emily Carr. Either she said it or a, a commentator did about her writings, their th her, her painting, their things dipped in love. Think of that. As she paints and dips her brush into the paint, she's dipping them in love and making them a creative act that brings forth life and love into the world. She was very skeptical of organized religion, but she saw in the power of nature something of the goodness of God's creation. And any time you and I do that, by whatever work we do, whether it's bringing children in the world and caring for them, teaching in any way that we bring life to the world, that's the fruit of our womb. That's love. And there will be a fulfillment. S some people don't experience that fruit of the womb. Some people have miscarriages and, and never able to have children. And there are other people who suffer deeply and are frustrated. 
Well, in their desire for fulfillment, in their wanting to be part of God and his creations, to be deeply fulfilled, that in itself is the fruit of their womb. So if you're blessed with many good results of, the, of your love, praise God and share your joy. If you're still longing for it, that's the presence of Christ, tiny, hidden in you, bringing life to the world. Will you join with me now, please, and we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. That the church be a sign and instrument for God's joy for the world, we pray to the Lord. For all pregnant parents, for the well-being of the children in the mother's womb, and for those who long to have a child, we pray to the Lord. For those experience deep suffering and desire peace and fulfillment through the love of God and of neighbor, we pray to the Lord. For the murdered and missing First Nations women, for the Nigerian girls who were abducted, we pray to the Lord. For our personal needs and intentions, for those united with us in prayer, and for those we love and care for, we pray to the Lord. Please join with me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from all my sinfulness. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we present to you on this feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe and grant that this sacrifice may strengthen us to fulfill your commandments as true children of the Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to the earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. of all holiness, 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all the people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Remember, most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, may the body and blood of your Son, which we receive in this sacrament, reconcile us always in your love, and may we who rejoice in Our Lady of Guadalupe live united and at peace in this world until the day of the Lord dawns in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass.